everyone, my name is Bala, I'm from the Chocolate Cellar. We're a small chocolatery based on the Wirral. The Wirral is between che uh, Liverpool and Chester um, and we do chocolates, all things chocolatey, so we do chocolate tastings, chocolate workshops and chocolate hem parties and we sell chocolate as well. So, um, I'm, we are this Easter we're sending out chocolate Easter making kits. So, we're going to do a chocolate demo using our kit. You don't have to use the kit, you can use something else if you've got something else at home. And obviously you'll need chocolate for sure. Um, but yes, yeah, start we have an Easter egg mould. And we have some decorative bits that you can add on to your Easter egg afterwards. Okay, so starting with the mould. Um, the first thing you need to do is make sure it's super clean. If you've washed it straight away, dry it. You don't want to leave it wet, otherwise it gets watermarks. So once you've dried it, and dry it very gently, you then take a soft cloth, we use microfiber cloth, but it's up to you, any soft cloth or soft tissue would work. Tissue's a bit harder, just because it can scratch the inside of the mould. So you want to get into the mould and just polish it very gently. So just gently polishing it out, making sure there's no smears on it. And then when you've got your mould nicely polished, and this was already polished, but I'm just showing you what to do. Once you've got your mould polished, get that ready. You also need something that you can place your chocolate into. Once these moulds are filled, if they're full of chocolate and they wobble around, it's going to be tricky. So you just need something to place it into to stop it wobbling. Okay? We've then got a bowl with our 300 grams of chocolate in, and we're going to melt the chocolate. Now, when people melt chocolate, they use different things. People use a bain-marie, which is a pan of boiling water, um, and then they pop their bowl over that, or they can use a microwave. Now, for a small amount of chocolate like that, if you've got bars of chocolate that you're melting down, then firstly, just break it into small pieces, pop it into your bowl, and then put it in for a minute. The first time you do it, put it in for a minute. Full power in your microwave. Lots of people are worried about burning chocolate. If you've got a really tiny quantity, I'd say if you've got about 100 grams or so, best way to melt chocolate is with a hairdryer. And I've, uh, people laugh when I say that, but we've got this little travel hairdryer that we always use for melting chocolate when we do demos and things. Okay, so I don't like using a bain-marie because it gives us a bit less control. However, um, we're just gonna let this chocolate melt we don't want it to overheat, so I'm just going to take it out. After a minute, it looks like nothing's happened. But if you give it a gentle stir, very gentle, you can see it's started to melt now. Okay? So then we're going to pop it back into the microwave for another 30 seconds. And literally, that's all you keep doing. You do one minute, then 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds until it's beautifully molten. And it's much nicer to do it in a microwave because then you don't have the issue with boiling water, possibly water getting into the chocolate. Um, and it's much cleaner because after the chocolate's set, we can actually just squish the bowls together and take the chocolate out, okay? So I'm just waiting for this microwave to finish doing its business. And here we are. So after 30 seconds, so this is a minute and 30 seconds, we can see it's starting to be beautifully molten. Now, you can see there's a few lumps in there. So I would say this is okay and keep stirring it because those little lumps will start melting in soon. So we keep stirring and then I've got a lolly stick here. Whoops, I have got a lolly stick trying to run away. I've got a little lolly stick here and I'm going to check whether or not the chocolate is tempered. Now you need to temper the chocolate and the point of that is that it comes away from the mould, it shrinks away from the mould. So there are different ways of tempering chocolate, but I'm going to show you a simple way. So I'm going to test it on my upper lip, which is funny. Um, I can lick it off afterwards as well. Um, but if it's cold, if, it's, if it feels like cold water, it's tempered. If it feels warm or lukewarm or at body temperature, then it's not tempered. Now this luckily has worked out for us. In the amount of time I put it in the microwave, 
it's melted and it is actually tempered I'm giving it a bit of a stir now, if it wasn't if it feels warm then I would add a handful of buttons in and that would help to cool it down when you're tempering chocolate just heating and cooling the chocolate quickly um, is what makes a difference so I always say it's temperature or movement if you're struggling it's either temperature or movement that hasn't worked out so we get onto our moulds now place the mould in the palm of your hand and pour the chocolate in nice and straight simply beautifully and give it a little tap so the point of giving it a tap is that it um, gets all the air bubbles out because you really don't want too many air bubbles there okay so we've got our second one which will fill up again and I'm just going to use the ladle to help me get all the chocolate out here okay now if it goes over the edge you don't really want too much chocolate over the edge Woo! it's all trying to fly away so we have if you use a flat end of a knife and just scrape off any excess chocolate there isn't actually any there but if you did have lots flying about you just scrape it off okay and then we leave it about a minute or so and the reason we're leaving it is where is this coming out okay here yep. speaking to my cameraman here so we're leaving it to see what the edge looks like now the longer we leave it the thicker that edge is going to get and you decide what thickness you want on your chocolate so it may be that you want it really really thick um, so just leave it for longer if you want it leave it for about 30 seconds maybe a minute it does depend how cold your chocolate is how cold your room is so I'd say just keep checking this edge here to see how thick that edge is coming out after a minute we are going to take the chocolate and then just flip it over back into the bowl so do this with confidence one two three flip it over and it's beautiful watching that chocolate come out okay quite therapeutic as well and then while it's still upside down we use the knife to scrape it clean okay so that's one egg done and then the second one we again do exactly the same thing flip it over tap it to let all the extra chocolate out and then just scrape it down okay and then this will go into the fridge for at least half an hour now sometimes I leave them overnight sometimes we leave them for an hour but um, it needs to be at least half an hour and then we leave it on our, I have pre-prepared an egg which has been in the fridge overnight So what we're going to do, and you have to do this quite gently, is here's one that has been set. So it may be that it comes off very easily. So you don't want to tip it over and actually drop it onto the table and it shatters. So put your palm over it, turn it over, and then try and peel that off. And hopefully you get a beautiful half of an egg. We get the other half. Okay, and then again, turn it over now sometimes it's stuck it won't come out if that's happening if you just gently twist your mold it should come out and then try the same again flip it over and peel that off but if it's still stuck and it's not coming out pop it back in the fridge it may be that the shells too thin in which case I would suggest you actually put more chocolate in and make it a bit thicker now once we've got the two halves out we will then need to stick them together so I have a stainless steel sheet here which I'm going to use and I'm going to use my trusty hairdryer so it is going to get a little bit noisy sorry and we warm this up with the hairdryer it burning 
hot but hot enough to melt chocolate so I'm just going to warm it up a bit more brilliant that should be warm enough touch it and it should feel like a hot bath okay and then rub the eggs backwards and forwards just so that the edge heats up and you can do this on the back of a warm baking tray as well so uh, whatever you feel comfortable with okay some people do use a hot knife and they'll warm the knife up and then do the edges it's entirely up to you how you do this okay so we have our egg so now we need to stick some decorations on so as I said we have got some different decorations that we send out with our kit if you get a lolly stick you can take some of that chocolate but there's not much there sometimes I'm left with lots when I'm doing really big thick eggs and I'm doing more than one but what I'll do is I will pour a bit of chocolate onto there and you can see the effectiveness of the hair dryer there I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different things this is like glue but you can also use it for decoration so once it's at this stage you could get a paintbrush and paint it over your egg to give it a bit of texture or you can use it as glue and pop a bit of chocolate onto there and then get your decoration and stick it on one two three and it sticks on or you could use your dinosaur I'm not going to leave the dinosaurs out because I know there are so many dinosaur fans out there we can't leave dinosaurs out there we go so you can pop that on and I'm going to give it a little bit of a texture at the bottom And as I said, using a paintbrush or a pastry brush, feel free to play around with the chocolate and do your own patterns. Let's do a bit of the sea around the seashell. Maybe a few waves. You have to use your imagination with this as well, obviously. Um, so I'm just showing you what you can do at home with what you have at home. And normally I'd use the pastry brush and actually brush all these waves in. But I'm just thinking, if you're stuck at home over this uh, quite strange time, then at least you can be making something quite pretty and very delicious. So I do hope you'll enjoy making your Easter eggs. As I said, we're sending out these kits, but if you're not um, in a position to get a kit, if maybe... Um, you know, you're not local and you don't want to pay for postage, etc, etc. If you use two bowls and make chocolate in there, use these as moulds. Once it comes out, you can stick it together and that could be an egg. So